Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. This year, uh, that will end, the fiscal year that will end at the end of this month, uh, the United States is on track to take in about 1,500 Syrian refugees. He would like them to accept, uh, at least make preparations to accept at least 10,000 uh, Syrian refugees uh, in the next fiscal year. Welcome to the Savage Nation. That is the voice of the Goebbels of our time, the nice young man named Josh Ernst, the spokesmouth for the Fuhrer, Obama, who has said, let's take in 10,000 Syrian refugees. We don't need to vet them. We don't know how many Al-Qaeda members or ISIS members are there, nor do we care. Just flood America with Syrian refugees because the EU has said that's what you should do. That's topic number one. Question for you, the audience. Should America take in 10,000 Syrian refugees out of humanitarian concerns? Certainly we need more refugees in America. We don't have enough from Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, Mexico, China. We need more, don't we? Because America is not diverse enough. And if you want to make an omelet, you got to break a few eggs. And the egg that's being broken right now is the egg white. Yes, that's what I just said, because we understand very well what this administration intends to do, is doing and wants to do, and how it's achieving its goals is quite, quite evident to all of us who study these things. The second topic is the nuclear chess game, and it's a bigger topic. Obama's trying to destroy us in every way he can, flooding us with refugees, immigrants, whatever you want to call these poor people. And now the nuclear chess game is on with the president playing for the other team. Going against the majority in Congress, going against the majority of the American people, going against common sense, going against national security interests. Forget Israel for a minute. Please forget Israel for a minute. Just put down the Israeli flag and pick up the American flag. Can anyone listening to this show tell me that you should give nuclear weapons to a country whose psychotic medieval throwbacks are screaming death to the great Satan at the same time that this this president of ours is cavorting with them, giving them the path to nuclear weapons, the path to intercontinental ballistic missiles. How does that benefit us? How? So the Revolutionary Republic, the Revolutionary Islamic Republic of Iran, is now telling us, they just raised the stakes again, by the way. He may have overridden the drunk, Boehner, he may have overridden the will of the people because this is how dictatorships work. I've studied history. I've studied nations. I've studied ancient China. Even the ancient Chinese lords said that the mark, if you read the Buddhist tractates, the mark of a good leader is a leader who listens to the will of the people and the people are happy. The mark of a bad leader is a leader who dismisses the people's concerns and makes the people miserable. Obama is the worst leader imaginable. A sneak a traitor, a cavorter with the enemies of America. So now they've raised the stakes. Khamenei made three deadly remarks just the other day. One, he said sanctions against Tehran must be lifted completely rather than suspended. Did you hear what I just said? Listen to what I just said. He got everything he wanted, and in the Iranian way, they're now raising the stakes. And in the capitulating spineless, anti-American, backstabbing way of your president, he's capitulating to them at every turn. Sanctions against Tehran must be lifted completely rather than suspended, he said yesterday. I have a question for you. If the framework of sanctions is to be maintained, then why did we negotiate at all? White House spokesmouth, the Goebbels of our time, Josh Ernst, a nice young man, answered him, Goebbels said, Iran will only see sanctions relief if it complies with the nuclear deal. Well, what is the nuclear deal? Well, that's, that's a big question. It's clear to anyone who studies this that Iran must first comply with the accord before sanctions are eased. And uh, Tehran's saying, no, we're, we want sanctions lifted first. I know some of this is hard for you to follow. This is the most important debate of your life. It's ongoing right now, live. Live. The drunks are back from their vacation. 
They got the gobbler McConnell off the chicken farm. They got Boehner off his uh, chaise lounge in Jacksonville. They dried him up. They gave him some man tan. They pushed him out there to mumble. Would you like to hear more about what's going on in Iran? Would you like to hear more about what your uh, leader is doing? Well, stay tuned because it's going to be developing as the show goes on. 10,000 Syrian refugees, he's demanding the Fuhrer. He decided. The headline says, President Obama has decided that the United States should take in at least 10,000 Syrian refugees over the next year. White House uh, spokesmouths said today, White House Press Secretary, the Goebbels of our time, Josh Ernst, said that the President and Secretary of Hate, John Kerry, are in alignment on the numbers. So this is where we're at. As millions of refugees flee the violence in Syria caused primarily by Hillary Clinton's insane Arab Spring policy and is surging into Europe, overwhelming Europe, invading Europe, a Muslim invasion that Europe has not seen since the Crusades. This time, though, it's under the guise of a humanitarian crisis. It's a Muslim jihad under the guise of, of a humanitarian crisis. Because after all, the refugees could go to Saudi Arabia, they could go to Jordan, they can go to Kuwait, they can go to the UAE where they speak their language, couldn't they? Why are they sending them to France, Holland, Spain, England, Germany? Why? Because this is the final solution to Europe. You have no idea what the EU is doing to, it, to these countries. You have no idea what your president, who is really a, a member of the EU, politically a member of the EU, is trying to do to this country. Trying to annihilate the history, the culture, the borders, language, culture of the nations that uh, we are living in. So here we are. No one's saying that all of them are terrorists. No one is saying that they're not entitled to some kind of relief. However, I would put national security before I would put the security of the Syrian refugees uh, first. How do you know who they are? Can anyone listening to this show tell me how you know who all these Syrians will be? When Al-Qaeda, excuse me, when ISIS itself has said proudly that they've snuck 4,000 into Europe under the guise of uh, being refugees? Huh? You know who they all are? You're positive that they're all refugees? Some of them are not soldiers of ISIS? What about the next step in the nuclear chess game? How does American democracy fare against that of the Revolutionary Republic? And that's a joke, the word Revolutionary Republic of Iran. There is no Revolutionary Republic of Iran. It's a hateful theocracy ruled by throwbacks who live in another universe. Meanwhile, Obama has brought his boot on Congress. Obama has squeeze the necks of Congress with his boot. Iran has won every round of this so-called negotiation. The Ayatollah is a dictator. He exercises total control over the Majis through his minion speaker, Ali Larajani. He has absolute power. Obama is no different. Obama is our Ayatollah. He is no different than the Iranians in that regard. He uses every type of chicanery and trickery known to the process of our government to override the will of the people and the will of Congress. We have no representation at all. Remember what this is supposed to be, a representative government. Your representative said no to this deal. But through chicanery and trickery, Obama has become equivalent to the Ayatollahs of Iran. He has absolute trust in the Iranians and no trust in the American people. So here we are. So what will the American lawmakers do today? Nothing. They're full of sound and fury signifying nothing. Full of sound and fury signifying nothing. And we will have a nuclear armed Iran. And then the fun will begin. They're not like any other nation, by the way. They're not like Israel. They're not like uh, France, Germany, America. Even Pakistan has a nu nuclear weapons. Pakistan is a Muslim nation with nuclear weapons. And yet Pakistan has never threatened genocide. Pakistan has never said we will annihilate another nation, kill all the people because we hate them, because we are genocidal maniacs. No, Pakistan is a Muslim nation. 
So Iran is not even a Muslim nation. Iran is a psychotic nation that uses Islam to push a mentality upon the world that the world should have learned by now cannot be tolerated at any cost. In the past, we would have stood up to such maniacs. We wouldn't have let Hitler's arise again. We said never again. Well, here it is happening again, right in front of our eyes. And strangely enough, Dianne Feinstein, allegedly of Jewish heritage, along with several other individuals in Congress of Jewish heritage, of all people, of all people, should know better, but they don't. Why? Because the dictator obviously sweetened the deal for them in ways we will never know. Historians will never even learn what this dictator has done to sway them to go along like the Judenrats that they are. That's a loaded word that I use for those of us who know history. Judenrat. But let's put the Jewish question aside. How about the American question? How in the world could anyone listening to this show say to me that it's a good thing to let genocidal maniacs have a nuclear weapon? Forget Muslim. It has nothing to do with Muslim or Islam. Pakistan is a Muslim nation. It has never threatened genocide. Iran has threatened genocide, not only against Israel, but they said Israel first, then Europe, then America. They said it as recently as yesterday. Why is the president dancing with the devil? These are the two questions. Syrian refugees, the Iran nuclear chess game. The lines are open at 855-407-282. We will be monitoring the Senate all afternoon today on the Savage Nation as the Stooges debate the dictator on this all-important issue. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. The absolute leader, Obama, who has spit on the people's will, spit on con Congress's will, and has used... Uh, legal chicanery to get around the will of the people and the will of Congress uh, wants to give Iran a pathway to a nuclear weapon even though he says no wants to give them 150 billion dollars to spend on funding terrorism and now to add insult to injury kicks us in the teeth while we're down and says the Fuhrer wants 10,000 Syrian refugees at least 10,000 so it doesn't sound like a lot does it in a nation of 300 million does it where will these 10,000 Muslim refugees go because by the way we're not talking about Syrian Christians. We're talking about Syrian Muslims who the minute they arrive in Europe, they pray to Allah. They get on the ground and pray to Allah and thank Allah for delivering them with safety. That would all be wonderful if the integration could be uh, counted upon. How has that worked out so far for France, Germany, and England? There are districts that the police cannot even go in. People are being beaten in the streets by Muslim gangs. But it doesn't make it to the Associated Press and Reuters. Reuters doesn't want you to see the world as it is. Now, I'm about to take your calls on this, these two important issues, including the Iran nuclear chess game, which Obama is playing for the other side, in my estimation. And I'm going to make an announcement that although Government Zero will not be out until late October, and I do not have copies yet, the demand for it is so great from the bookstores that the publisher has escalated the first printing to 150,000. And I'm going to start giving away free copies today. You won't get them for a few weeks, but you're going to get them if you get on the show and you make a good point. You're going to get a copy of Government Zero, which will be my last nonfiction political book. After that, I will do a book about Teddy. I'm through. This is it. It's the last political book. Jandon, KSFO, go ahead. What's your point? Thank you, Mr. Savage. Hey, um, one of the questions I'm grappling with with this refugee crisis is, do we have a moral obligation, being that it's failed U.S. policy in the Middle East that caused this crisis, to at least sift through some of these people and bring them in? Uh, well, let's start with, you made a big statement there, and I'm sure you're not alone in your thinking. I'm sure those in San Francisco who ride bicycles and beat up women with chains uh, during uh, mass bike rides, those who let uh, bums crap on the floor would agree with you. That's the kind of rhetoric you would hear from people who are, who are stoned all of the time. What do you mean it's our failed policies that caused Syria, Syria's humanitarian crisis? You mean it's Hillary Clinton's Arab Spring, isn't it? 